Our reading today, the Holy Gospel, is from the first chapter, the Gospel according to St. Luke. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leapt for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. Here ends the reading for this day. I bring you grace and peace in the name of God our Father and of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I have a confession at the start here. Uh, I am a frustrated Jeopardy player. I have been trying for the last several years to pass the online quiz that might enable me to go down the road to eventually becoming the contestant. They normally do it in the latter part of January, so I'm getting ready for this year. So I was watching it the other night, and they had one of those categories where the category was, you know, you know those words that you say the same way, but they have different meanings, like rain, R-A-I-N, and rain, R-E-I-G-N, and raise, R-A-Z-E, and raise, R-A-I-S-E, and sense, C-E-N-T-S, and S-E-N-S-E, -E, sense. Now that last one, sense, fits these last couple of days before Christmas. Because by this time, you may have noticed the amount of C-E-N-T-S sense that have gone out into the economy, out of your wallet for gifts and food and decorations. I still have a little work to do yet, too, this afternoon. But what about how our senses, S-E-N-E-S, are all used during this season. Seeing, hearing, tasting, smelling, touching, seems to be used maybe even overworked during this time of preparing for Christmas and then in the 12 days of the, the Christmas season, which are about to begin. For example, the, the sensation I felt as I carried that freshly cut tree into the house a couple of weeks ago was a clear and sometimes slightly painful example of using the sense of touch. And then there was Friday night in my kitchen. Taste and smell were really predominant as I pulled the gingerbread out of the oven. Boy, that was really good too. You should have had some. I should have brought some, my goodness, what am I thinking? It's impossible to ignore the sights of the coming season ever since the first displays went up in the stores in August. <laughs> and then of course, if you're watching television for any extent, all the movies are being shown. Uh, Chevy Chase is still trying to get 20,000 imported Italian twinkle lights to light all at the same time. Bing Crosby is still tap dancing down the light fantastic with Danny Kaye. And of course, here in the church, we see the coming season, the increasing number of candles that are lit each week. And now here we are, at the time of the year when it is most dark outside, here in the church, the light of God is at its brightest. And then there are the sounds that we hear. Oh my, there are plenty of them, aren't there? Uh, those of you with young children probably have some specific types of sounds that occur at this time of the year, but for an empty nester like me, uh, at this time of the year, when I think of the sounds, I usually think of the music. And at this time, I usually give the words over to the music more often. While the words of telling the story of the preparation and then the birth of Christ are powerful and compelling, it's in the music, I think, where the joy, the essence, the significance of Christmas is exceptionally expressed. Uh, it's expressed in the grand and in the plain lyrics of the season, as well as in the substantial and the silly lyrics, too. I find it necessary to hear both the beautiful, perfect, pitch of Nat King Cole singing the Christmas song, 
as well as Elvis Presley growling out about Santa Claus coming to town. And darn near everything in between. I love the music and the messages that they impart to us about the event of Christmas, about the incarnation of Jesus Christ. Yesterday morning, my wife came down the steps whistling a carol. And then she said, put on some music on the radio. As she worked on, she was making a gift, so I put the music on. We had it on all day yesterday. The music of the church marks the progression of the great story of the incarnation of the Messiah. In this season of Advent, where we sing of God's promise and our preparations to the great hymns we'll hear tomorrow night and during the 12 days of Christmas, which declare God's fulfillment of the promise in the birth of Jesus, God's Son. Even the Gospel writer, Luke, uses song here in the first couple chapters of his Gospel to tell the story. In these first chapters, he includes the songs of Zechariah, Simeon, the heavenly host singing over the shepherds, and Mary's magnificent song of the praise of God. We haven't heard that song yet. We're about to. Oh, I would have I would keep reading the lesson for today. It's part of the music of the season. So I don't think we can get through today without hearing it. So here it is. I'm not going to sing it. I'll say it. But listen carefully to how her poetry lifts up, gives praise and thanksgiving to God. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord. And my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in their thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. Fantastic. Can you hear the joy in her words? Mary sings of the fulfillment of the promise that God does not abandon humanity. That God stays connected with humanity through both times peaceful and turbulent. This hymn of Mary uses the language of the, and the tradition of the Hebrew scriptures to weave a new tapestry of God and of God's love for all the world. This is perhaps one of the oldest songs ever sung in early Christian worship, and we still have it around with us today. And as we reflect on the lyrics, we can see why. God looks deep into our souls and magnifies us. The Song of Mary is not just a, oh, I just want to feel good little ditty. God knows we have too many songs like that. Now, this hymn is a majestic song to the comfort and joy that we have, knowing how God is active in being close to us. But while it begins with Mary singing personally about God, my soul is magnified and my spirit is rejoicing, she quickly moves to sing God's praise for what God does for all of humanity. How God brings down the powerful, lifts up the lowly, feeds the hungry, and helps his servants. No wonder Christians have been singing this hymn since the start of the church. This is a message of how God lives with us through the hopes and fears of all the years. This is a song where we sing of the fulfillment of God's promise to us, a promise which to Mary came by way of the angel. For the early church and for our church today, we sing Mary's song with the certainty of the great events that are about to unfold. We sing in faith not so much about the birth of the baby, but who the baby will grow up to become. The Christ, the one who lives 
dies, and is raised to unite us with God forever. But we know that some years, for some people, it's hard to sing that song. We know that some year or years we've had enough time, we've had a tough time singing out. I've been through a couple of Christmases like that where it was hard to sing. And we know that this year some are struggling to find their voice to sing this year, or maybe they can only manage a whisper. The ones who are dealing with illness, a troubled relationships, the ones who feel sad, depressed at this time of the year, the ones who are worried about a job, the ones debating utility bill, groceries, which to pay, the ones who are grieving the death of a beloved family member. For those and others in similar situations, it's hard to sing right now. And this is precisely why we have the community of the church to help sing for us to help us through times like that. Mary's song is not one about of a personal savior. She sings of having a savior with and for the whole world. And at these times, it is required that those who can sing to do so with confidence and vigor. Those who can sing must be the presence of Christ in the lives of those who are hurting right now, sharing the song of joy and hope and promise that comes to us in the baby in Bethlehem. And we know this quite clearly this year, the events of the last couple of weeks. There are many people that are finding it hard to sing out this Christmas time. Therefore, the ministry of proclaiming the good news of great joy, the news we have been preparing for during Advent, falls to those who can support the others who are struggling. We must be the catalyst of God's love and grace so that all people, whatever their situation, may prepare him room. As disciples of God, baptized into the mission and ministry of Jesus Christ, we use the Holy Spirit's power in providing this ministry. We reach into our souls to magnify those of the other for the faith that keeps us going. And as we sing, we continue to look outward in mission, to keep on keeping on with our Christian duty to lift up the poor and feed the hungry. Mary sang that this promise was made for our ancestors and is made for our descendants forever. Our song might start out as a whisper, but as we sing together, we will all gain strength and enter into the reality of faith, courage, and love to be the disciples who witness and participate in God's promise to change the world. Sing well, my friends. Sing well. Our joy today is centered in the mighty one who has done great things, and holy is his name. Amen.